You are alive. Here I am. I'm four minutes late. I realized that I hadn't plugged in one of my speakers, so I had to make a quick switch. I'm really excited to be on with you guys today. As soon as someone says I can hear your voice, I'm going to turn my phone off so it won't ring and ding on me while I'm trying to chat with you guys. As soon as someone says I can hear you or I can see you, to make sure that everything's working, not that I ever have technical problems, sarcasm insert, then we will begin. Sometimes technology can be more trouble than it's worth. I'm just going to wait till one person says, I can hear you or I can see you. Hey, Andrew. Good to see you again. Hi, Julie. Beatrice. Here you guys are. Can you hear me all right? You can see me all as well. All right, Beatrice says I can hear you. Awesome. Rogue hair here. Oh, okay. I don't want to wait too long because I'm always the eager beaver. I just want to dive straight into the pool and start sharing what God told me this morning. But it's nice sometimes to wait a little bit till. God just started, just right off the hop this morning, just started talking to me, and he was making himself so utterly clear. I was completely mind blown, and I was literally sitting at my computer just shocked, kind of, and kind of in a daze, and like, God, I don't even know what to do with this one. You know, it's not every, it's not something he's never told you before, but when he, what it shocks me so much is when he repeats the same thing and confirms himself from this angle and that angle and this person and that and that prophetic word and that verse and it's like oh my goodness your head just starts spinning and god is everywhere and he's all around you and he's thundering in your ear and it's just it's so 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 good and then he gave me a word for the prophetic calendar club people for the word that we have for this month which is so precious so I want to release that today to you guys too. It's going to be, it's going to be good. Hi, Brenda. I'm going to pray. I think I'm going to, and then I'm just going to go right in. Just going to make sure that my phone is turned off. Do not want any interruptions because we all know how the enemy likes to do that okay friend brenda says i am in that club yes you are i have a few calendars left like maybe i'm guessing like i'm guessing here like now like five Maybe. So, hey, Laura. So, if you uh, you really want a calendar, you can you can still get one. If I have a few left, so never it's never too. Well, it will be too late once so once those five run out, we run out. But you can still get one if you jump on it now. Ah, thank you. Laura says I look so cute tonight. I'm wearing all the camel camel bling as you can see. These seriously, I've been so thankful to the Lord for ha ha giving me the Holy Ghost creativity to make this set. They've been such a blessing to, blessing to me. And man, has he ever confirmed that camel is coming word. Wow, hasn't that been incredible? I just glanced at the live clock and it was 444, by the way. I had to say that. <laughs> but hasn't that been incredible, guys? how the Lord has confirmed that camel word. Oh my word. 
And if you didn't watch that teaching that I posted on my timeline about the sound of the camels coming, you need to. You will be so encouraged. Wow, just completely amazing. Just love it. It's my favorite thing. My favorite thing is being in God's manifest presence and hearing his voice. I'd have to say that those are my two favorite things. So that makes sense and why I have to come on here every time and share with you. I can't I feel selfish keeping things to myself. So guys, let's pray together. You guys can pray for my body while I pray for our life. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Papa. My beautiful Holy Spirit. Thank you, lovely Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you for how much you encourage me this morning. And I just pray, God, that you would put your anointing onto the words that you have for me to say and that I would speak your words, that the anointing would come on them and they would do exactly what they're called to do. I pray that they would bring massive encouragement, Lord, that they would heal, that they would deliver, that they would bring clarity, that they would do whatever needs doing, Lord. That they would bring peace, that they would bring hope, that they would re re press the reset button for people that need a mental and emotional reset, Lord. I just surrender my voice to you. I surrender my spirit, my soul, my body to you, God. Just speak your word, what you want to say. Thank you, God, for being so encouraging, being such an amazing God. And I just pray for every person that's listening and every person on the on the replay that as we're on here, that they would feel the presence of the Holy Spirit tangibly with them. Manifest yourself to them, Lord, through your Holy Spirit. May they feel your presence wrap right around them, Lord. I ask for a spirit of wisdom and revelation. And I just thank you, God, for your huge love. You're so good to us. Thank you, God, that I don't know when I don't have to worry about what to say because the word says that you're going to put a, a words in our mouth and you'll speak for us, Lord. So I thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, there's a bunch of more people popped on while we were praying. I feel like I, I feel like I leave earth when I pray for a little bit and then when I open my eyes I come back it's like Narnia I go into a closet and I come back hi Darlene hi Rebecca Connie hi Connie hi Shelly you guys are awesome hi Andrea hi Anne I know you so I always say that I always do feel like I know you so good to see you guys on here. So, okay, time to jump right into the word. So, this morning I woke up and I had have been having a conversation in the Facebook comments the night before with a very, very successful healing minister from the States. He, I commented on one of his posts and he had replied to my comment. So this morning I woke up and just to see if he had said anything else and he had said uh, he had encouraged me to watch certain teachings on his youtube channel and i said i've watched those all two or three times and he said well maybe i need to post more healing videos and i said i had replied before i got to bed last night maybe i just need a breakthrough lol so this morning when i woke up i looked if he had replied and he had said Maybe I should, he had said, maybe I should um, write an article about breakthrough, which he did today by the name. His name is Roger Sapp, Roger Sapp with two P's. 
and you really need to look them up and if someone can put that in the comments you really need to look them up if you want revelation on healing i've listened to zillions of healing teachers and some amazing ones but i've never felt the freedom and the liberty that his teachings gave to me never is so that, that i actually that i'm at a loss for words right now it completely boggled me thank you laura roger sap yeah and he has an understanding of healing that that rocked me and it's going to set me free i know it so anyways he had, he had uh, i checked this morning and then he said well maybe i will post uh, an article today on facebook about breakthrough because there's some things that people don't know about breakthrough and that the bible talks about it actually i was like that would be great and so i was just pondering that pondering that word breakthrough and just thinking about it you know you're waking up you're half awake and then i went on to my facebook memories i like to do that i like to go down memory lane in the in the morning and see what i've all posted and what i have posted and you guys who saw my timeline i had posted a big poster of a fierce looking angel and it said breakthrough is coming i had posted it two years ago i think and i was just like when i went up you know and i was like okay that's interesting i was just chatting about breakthrough with roger and now here's a big poster in my facebook memories breakthrough is coming and i was like okay god i'm i'm listening lord and so i was just this word breakthrough was starting to run around in my spirit and i was my prophetic antennas were starting to go do 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 and i don't know if they, if they make that noise but everything inside when every i i don't know what it is like for you but I can feel it when the Lord is like getting ready to speak to me and to reveal some things to me. And it's like everything starts standing up and attention up at attention on the inside of you. Your ears perk up, your eyes open up, your heart slows down. Everything's like, okay, God wants to say something. And I uh, and I'm like with the big spoon and the big bowl, like ready to dig in. Like I want to eat this all up. And so this is running around through my head, and I thought, well, okay, that's pretty weird. That's cool. And then I did what I did, what the prophets are saying this morning. What the prophets are saying, heaven's news, much better. That's where I come from. That's my home country. I like to check on heaven's news. And so I checked, I was scrolling through the prophets and what they were saying this morning. And, um, Doug Addison had posted his word for the morning like he always does and it was stay at peace breakthrough is here and I was like <sighs> at that point I was like okay God you have my attention I'm fully listening I know you want to say something to me about breakthrough you're making this very clear to me and I was like <laughs> You know, there. what does it say in the Bible? Uh, you have to have a witness to her in the Bible. It says, I don't have a reference for it, but there's a verse that says that you should have two or three witnesses to um, to confirm a matter or something like that. And I was thinking, well, I've got three witnesses here, three confirmations that God is speaking to me of a breakthrough. So, God, I'm fully listening. I, I want to know about breakthrough. And so i my memory went back to uh i think this was about two years ago to um an experience i had at my church family and we, we were in the middle of worship and all of a sudden in the spirit we're all standing just belting out our hearts that's when we were in we we're um in the middle of all the COVID shenanigans. So we were meeting in homes and just worshiping. And so it's extra, extra awesome because if you fill a living room with a bunch of spirit filled on fire people and they are belting their hearts out in worship. 
that is just freaking awesome. The presence of God is just just so manifest. It's just so incredible. And we were in the middle of that. And as we're belting it out, worshiping, I see in the spirit all of a sudden, I see a man standing with a blue sash. I think of a shoulder length hair beside the piano. And I was thinking, who are you and why are you here? And I knew it was an angel. And I said, Lord, who is this angel? And he said, he said, it's the angel that talked to Joshua. And I was like, what? I got to go look this up. And so, you know, when Joshua's getting ready to um, cross into the promised land, he has this angel appear to him. And this angel says, to, he says to this angel, whose side are you on? Are you for us or against us? He said, neither. I'm coming here for to give you the word of the Lord. And so Joshua takes, he says, take your shoes off. You're on holy ground, you know. And I was like, and the Lord showed me that it was a breakthrough angel. This is two years ago. So my mind is going back, back to this um, place, you know, when I had this encounter and I was thinking, I need to go back in my notes and see what you got all show me with that breakthrough angel. I'm thinking about this after having these three breakthrough words from the Lord in this morning, like successfully one after another, like boom, 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 like all in three minutes. So that's why I was so whoa lord you know and so as i'm pondering that i got my breakfast ready and then i remembered that oh that's right one of my friends had sent me a video about a certain preacher on the topic of transition or something of, that i was supposed to watch the teaching and i thought i should do that this morning so i popped it on and i See, see what it was about. Guess what it was about, you guys. Joshua and that breakthrough angel that talked to him and how to break through and how to transition and cross over. I'm not even kidding you. I was just so shocked I started crying. That's, when God speaks to me, I just cry. That's the, just, it's just how I am. It's just how it goes. I don't know why I do that. I can't change it. I was sitting there on my recliner, and my boys are eating breakfast around me. They're used to it already. I'm just sitting there, nodding away, drinking my tea, and, and just listening to this, just, just shocked. And this whole teaching is about how the, the breakthrough angel came to Joshua. And I was just like, like, wow, 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 Lord, you are saying something about breakthrough. And I, I don't even know what to do with this anymore. And so I listened to the whole teaching. It was really, really good. And I was just sitting on the chair and I was thinking, what now, Lord? You know, I had forgotten about any plans of what I wanted to do that day. I was just thinking, what, what, what now, God? And um, as I was thinking, what now, I felt led to go back into my face, Facebook memories. And I did, and I had noticed that two years ago I had gone live. And I had, I don't even remember what the title was, but I had gone live about something. It's was some, I think it said something about confirmation and angels and how to approach the coming week or something like that. I can't even, can't even remember what I called it. And the Lord just kind of nudged me, watch your live. I'm like, watch my own live? He's like, yeah, do it. I felt nudged by the Holy Spirit. Come on, do it. Watch your own life. It was 45 minutes, 45 minutes long. So I thought, okay, I'll watch my own life. And I started watching it. I couldn't remember. Like, memory's not my strong, strong point. And with the neurological battle that I've been in, it's kind of, my memory has kind of taken a real hit. And so I for sure don't remember what I said on that live. I had no idea. So I watched it. Oh, I cannot even explain to you guys how I felt. And I'm going to put that link in the comments. And I wish that you would all watch it. I'm, I hope this doesn't sound like I'm bragging on myself because I'm truly not. And if you know me well enough, I'm not. But there was so much anointing on that live. You don't notice it so much when you're speaking because 
you're caught up in what you're saying and in your notes and stuff but when you go and watch your own live there was so much anointing on it and there the peace of god and the joy of the pre the presence of the holy the joy of the holy spirit was present and i just cried so hard while i watched i watched the whole thing and i cried so hard and it was all about the breakthrough angel i had no idea i have completely for, forgotten about that and i went into some dream that god had given to me and what god was saying and i was like oh jesus you're so good and i was just crying and you know what um sometimes we get discouraged you guys i posted that word two years ago sometimes we, we get discouraged when we get a word is happening and everything opposite of that word is happening but you know what you guys don't forget i don't know the number maybe someone on here does but how many years did they prophesy that the savior would be born and would come to set his people free how many years hundreds of years and so don't be discouraged when a prophetic word doesn't come true right away that was two years ago and today it nailed me and was everything that i needed to hear and i'm definitely going to post the link and i highly highly encourage you to, to watch it and just to soak soak it in because it is such a no i couldn't believe it you guys you don't even know how i how i felt about that i was like uh, i was just blown away by the fact that uh, that i had done a whole entire teaching about or about the breakthrough angel and all that and i was just <laughs> at that point i just left the living room uh, i thought that i gotta get alone i went to my bedroom closed the door and, and just started just playing the song show me your face by jesus image incredible song by stephanie gretzinger and just started listening to that and just crying before the lord and studying breakthrough scriptures and i was just so 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 blessed by his presence and what he was showing me and that he was confirming to me that breakthrough is here breakthrough is here breakthrough is here hope deferred makes a heart sick that means hope that never that's deferred it's always put off it's never it's always tomorrow but tomorrow never comes but a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. We are there. We are there. This is a breakthrough month. God would not tell me that so many. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man, son of a man that he should repent. He would not tell me that so many times in a row this morning and just to dangle a carrot in front of me. But you can't really have it. Breakthrough is my portion. And all those scriptures I shared this morning, I was just so blessed by them our god is a god of breakthrough and he lives on the inside of me and he lives on the inside of you and i'm, I'm here to tell you that breakthrough is here breakthrough is here breakthrough is here i can't keep saying that enough breakthrough is here and it's something that we have to like a butterfly in a cocoon it's a struggle when they they wiggle and squirm, if you ever watch on YouTube, how they get out of a uh, get out of a cocoon, they squirm and struggle to get out of there. But when they're out, they're out. But I'm telling you that breakthrough is here. I'm trumpeting from the rooftops as best best as best as I can to you to share that with you. While I was seeing um watching the teachings a uh, phrase had gone through my heart but i didn't understand it so i kind of just put it on hold and i heard when i was listening to these breakthrough teachings from the one that my friend had sent me i also heard the phrase in my spirit curve of resistance and i thought curve of resistance is that a thing <sighs> And so then just be, 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 being real, is that a thing? And so I just kept watching because I wanted to pay attention, but I noted it, you know? And so after I was worshiping here and just studying the 
breakthrough scriptures, I looked up what curve of resistance means. And it's, I Googled it and it said, the curve of resistance is the added resistance or drag on a train that must be overcome by the tractive effort in rounding a curve. Resistance is usually measured in Newtons per ton of train weight. I'll say that again. Curve resistance is the, is the added resistance or drag on a train that must be overcome by the tractive effort in rounding a curve. So in other words, when a train goes around the curve, it takes more effort, it takes more force because there's resistance going straight. There's not a lot of resistance between the wheels and the tracks. But when you go around the curve, it creates resistance. And so curve resistance is the added resistance or drag on a train that must be overcome by the tractive effort needed to round the curve. And I was just like, why would you tell me that? And all of a sudden, the, the Lord's like, Kath, what? what's your word for the month in your prophetic calendar? And I just remembered and I started, <laughs> started crying all over again. And I don't know if you can, you probably can't read it on here, but just in case you can, I'll show you. Turning the corner from death to life. And there's a picture of a corner there. And I was like, oh my God, curve resistance. And the Lord is saying that that's a prophetic word that was in the calendar for this month, turning the corner from death to life. This is for my, this is for everybody, but a special shout out to my prophetic calendar club peeps. We are turning the corner, you guys. And if you are dealing with delay, if you're dealing with discouragement, if you're dealing with depression, it has been a heavy fight for me. I don't know where you're at, but whatever you're dealing with, it is the, it is the, what you are feeling is the curve resistance. I didn't even know that existed, that phrase. The Holy Ghost knew. And it, you're just feeling the added resistance that is on your train, what you're pulling behind you, the destiny you're pulling, the people that will come and hop on your train because of what you carry, and because of what God will do through you and in you. And that it, the curve, the resistance you're feeling is that is the resistance on a train that must be overcome by the attractive effort in rounding a curve. So we are coming around the curve. We are turning the corner from death to life. And I was like, God, that's so good. Thank you, Lord. So many confirmations. I was like, praise the Lord. And he does that every month with my prophetic calendar. He blows my mind usually more, far more than once, than once a month, to be honest. He is just so good to me with confirming his word. And so I'm sitting here and I'm just boggled by this. And I glanced down at the bottom of my computer. And I guess my computer did an update now. And it shows a, just a tiny little picture in the left-hand corner beside the search bar, a little cartoon picture every day it changes. And guess what it was today? <sighs> it's like, it's like, <laughs> The Holy Ghost makes me happy. It's a train coming around a curve. <laughs> I'm not even making this stuff up. I was like, what? I, I was, I'd say, what so many times in one morning? I didn't know what to do with myself. It's a train. It's coming around a corner. <laughs> with, a, with a lighted lamppost. It's going toward a lighted lamppost. And I was just like, Jesus. I get me on the breakthrough train and I just declare, I just declare what God showed me when I prepared these calendars with the Holy Spirit for you guys and for myself. We are turning the corner from death to life. Amen. Look for signs in your body, in your finances, in your relationships, and just declare it and decree it. Just declare it and decree it, you guys. You know what the beautiful thing is about declaring and decreeing? You don't necessarily even have to believe what you're saying. As long as you have an obedient heart to say what God says, your emotions will get in line and doubt will leave and unbelief will leave. You just have to say it. That is your biggest, biggest weapon is that sword in your mouth. But if you don't speak that sword, 
stays sheathed. If you stay silent, if you don't decree and declare, it doesn't work, guys. you got to pull the sword out of the sheath, open your mouth, and let out that sword so that the devil runs back. And I was just, like, so blessed. Like, how many confirmations is that in the one morning? I can't, I don't even know how many. But Maggie and I on our last live after... After we came off the last, our last live with you guys about Tibet in January, we were like, what stuck out to you? And we, we both said the power of decreeing. And I was like, yes, that's exactly what stuck out to me. And then that very week, Dutch Sheets said he was going to have a whole week where he would focus just on healing. I mean, just on decreeing. And I was like, okay, thank you, God, because that's what I was sensing so much. And, you know, the power of the decree is what sends the enemy back. And that's why I'm so passionate about coming on here live and sharing the word of the Lord with you, what he tells me in my ear, what he reveals to me in the scriptures, because that is the sword. All the other armor protects us, but the sword is the one that we do damage with. The rest is to protect, protect, the rest is to protect us, but that one is to do some damage with. You know what I mean? Hang on, I'm going to take a glass of water. Getting all breathless here. I get so fired up, my nerves can't keep up. Come on, nerves. Keep up. And that's why I'm so, so, so passionate, you guys, about coming on here and sharing the word of the Lord with you. Because that is the what we, that, you know what? That is what we need for Canada to to be released into its full destiny if the ecclesia if the remnant and the children of god will stand up and whether they feel like it or not whether they're crying or discouraged or fearful or angry but just in obedience just say what god says it, andrew womack calls it effortless change he says the word will do the work i love that the word will do the work so i was so so blessed by that you know i wasn't planning to share this right now but just feel led to go there i'll probably come and do a different life some time and go a little deeper into this what i'm going to go into now but in the year 2000 right before COVID shut down everything i was still well enough to travel barely god just got me in the nick of time and god told me that I needed to go to a conference in Kelowna because where Jeremiah Johnson was prophesying. And I said, said, Lord, I'm in no shape to go nowhere. And I don't have the money, which is a very faithless response. Don't say that to him. Don't do as I do in that matter. And anyways, long story short, he just impressed on me, you must go. And I didn't know anything what it was about. I had no idea about the man who hosted it, which is Art Lucy. Now I know him personally powerful leader in our country in the ecclesia and the remnant of our country and so we went long story short we went and it was all about the prophet and the power of the prophetic words and if you're listening here and you're thinking but i'm not a prophet i you are a prophetic voice a prophet is an office that god gives to certain people that he calls them to be but Everyone is called to be a prophetic voice. Every one of you is a prophetic voice. Every one of you has the word of the Lord on the inside of you. And it will do the work. The word will do the work. But you have to not leave your sword sheathed. You have to let it out of your mouth. Who cares if it doesn't, if you don't feel it, just let it out, let it out of your mouth. And so they were talking about the power of the prophet and how Canada needs the prophets and it just really blew my mind and I, I said I said to I said to my friends the other day, I said, Hey guys, I said, rattle me off a list of US prophets just off the top of your head. So they said, Okay, um, uh, Tim Sheets, Jeremiah Johnson, Doug Addison, Sean Boltz, Cindy Jacobs, and they just Patricia King and they just rattled me off a list. Chuck Pierce, and I was like, yeah, that's cool. That's amazing, isn't it? And they are like, yeah. 
I said, now rattle me off a list of Canadian prophets. And they just looked at me and said, um, I don't know. And that, the Lord spoke something into me and it makes me emotional. <laughs> but he spoke something to me in that moment and he said, it's not that you don't have them. It's that they're hidden in the caves because of Jezebel. And when we went to that Kelowna conference, Jeremiah Johnson is a very trusted voice, a very powerful voice of pure voice of God. And he had asked the Lord, what was Canada's biggest hindrance? And the Lord had said to him, it's Jezebel. And Jezebel was the one who killed the prophets and made them run and, and they ran and hid in caves. And it is time for the prophets and the, and the prophetic voices, every one of you, to come out of their caves, to come out of their hiding places, to come out of their shame, to come out of their depression, arise from the depression and the prostration in which circumstances have kept you, and rise to a new life, Isaiah 60, verse 1. And it is time. It is time. I'm so passionate about I'm praying for prophetic voices and prophets, prophetic reformers to rise up in every province for them to rise up in every province and release the word of the Lord, start releasing it, release it when you're driving, release it when you're in the grocery store, release it in the shower, re release it in your house, release it over your family, release it over your impossible situations. We just release it. Let the word do the work. Let the word do the work. And I'm so passionate about that. And, and it is time. Um, uh, I had a, download come to me this last Saturday at our church family gathering. Uh, that's what I call it when we meet because that's exactly what it is. Uh, like the word service is just a personal personal thing. I call it our church family gathering. I had this download come to me, which I will share at a later time. But he showed me some things about um, Jezebel and Canada and some encouraging stuff. And I want to come on later in the near future and do a specific word for Canada on what God has shown me. But it is time for Jezebel to fall out of the tower and be eaten by the dog, so to speak. If you know your Bible, you know what I'm talking about. And the way that that happens is if we humble ourselves and speak God's word out of our mouth, no matter how we feel, no matter what situations we see, we speak the living word of God, the two-edged sword, you know. It's only two-edged when it comes out of your mouth. One edge is when, when God speaks it to you. And the other edge is when God, when it comes out of your mouth. That's when it becomes a two-edged sword. That's sharp and powerful, effective and energizing. And so I just felt, I had a vision years ago where the Lord was calling the prophets out of the caves and they didn't want to come and I was among them and I remember in the vision I saw myself shake my head no I don't want to come out and as I said no I don't want to come out and he came into the cave and he started covering me with healing mud and I'll never forget this vision it was so real so vivid and he started covering me with healing mud and as I watched him finish doing that, the mud turned into this beautiful vintage wedding dress. And then he said, come out. And I, and I came out of the cave. I was ready to come out. And that was the bride of Christ, ready, the prophetic voice of, of Jesus, the bride, ready to come out of her cave and speak the word of the Lord, because that is, that is our breakthrough speaking what he says, saying what he says, because his word never returns to him void. That's a big statement, isn't it? I believe that's in Isaiah 55, um, if I'm wrong on, on that. Um, then forgive me, but, but that's why it's so important. And so when I was, when God had me on this word on breakthrough, 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 I knew that I needed to, I needed to couple that with it the thing that he had been showing Maggie and myself, that it is time to decree more than we have ever decreed before because we are turning the corner 
from death to life this month, in the month of January, in the month of Tibet. I see my little train. I see my little train graphic on the bottom of my computer coming around the corner there. And uh, it's the time to turn from the corner from death to life, you guys. And the way we're going to do it is with the words in our mouth that God speaks. And I encourage you to do it. I encourage you to decree more than you've ever decreed before. Just decree, decree what he's saying to you. Decree what you're reading in the word. And let the word do the work. Send those swords into the enemy's camp and just give him a nightmare of a day. Give him a double migraine. And let the Lord have his way. I know I shared this last time, but I will share it again. Um, a friend of mine had an, he's a very vivid dreamer and has been taken into trances and taken out of his body into the spirit realm several times. I, I want to do that, Lord. That's never happened to me before, but a, a friend of mine is a very vivid dreamer. And he had to do a while while last time, but I feel to share it again. And he actually saw the kingdom of heaven in the sky. It was beautiful, and there was pillars and doors. And he said it was just beautiful, and he was standing there watching it. And, and um, he was just in awe. And as he was watching it, he tried to take a picture of it, like the cell phone, cell phone generation that we are. And the clouds kind of went over it, and 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 he couldn't see it, and he was like disappointed. He's like, "Lord, show it to me again." And the clouds moved, and the and the kingdom of heaven came into view again. And then he heard this powerful booming voice inside of him, and it said, "Bring my kingdom down to earth. Bring my kingdom down to earth." And he's like, he was just said he was just ta taken back, like, wow. And as he said this, the kingdom of heaven in the sky. He said it was like chunks of it started falling down onto the earth and hit the earth. Chunks of it hit the earth. Boom, boom. And he was just watching this sight perform in the dream. And they started, the kingdom of heaven started reassembling itself on earth. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven is literally happening right now. God showed it to him in a dream. And the way that we can bring his kingdom down is with our words. That's the, God made the world with, with his word. He sets his word even above his own name. And it's just, it's the month to decree, 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 decree. Even the thing that Dutch Sheets had. But the dream that Greg Hood had was incredible. You need to watch that. That is just, it's called the dragon. Calamity. Oh, it has, it's probably got a long title. I'll put it in the comments or somebody else can if they've watched it. But there was three doors, and there were two doors had evil that that Satan wanted to open the, the door to. And in the in the dream, the dream, the man that had this dream, Greg, he had tried to push the door closed, and the angel had said to him, You can't push that door closed with your hands. And he had tried to push the other door to evil close. And he said, you can't push that door close with your hands. And then he had said, you have to speak to it. And then Dutch had started decreeing over it. And those doors had slammed shut to the, the evil plans of the enemy. And, and angels had immediately stood guard over those doors, never to be opened again. And that's how we do it, you guys. What a powerful, powerful dream. That's how we do, do it. That's how we break through. That's how we, we just... Because the God of the breakthrough, you know, we have we carry the breakthrough in our spirit. Because everything that God has for us is already in our spirit. Everything he purchased for us on the cross is in our spirit. And we decree with our words and we give him thanks and we give him praise. And we just, uh, this is the year the Lord spoke to me of abundance and inheritance. And this is the year to walk in our inheritance. Jesus died because he knew that we couldn't get the will. He died. You can't have the will signed over to you until the person is dead. And so Jesus died so knowing that we could be in the will. And we are in his will now. And we have his spiritual authority. And so I, I release 
a spirit of encouragement, divine encouragement over you, divine boldness over you, divine hope over you to decree again, to take your de to take your decreeing to another notch and to know, to know that we are turning the corner from death to life, literally turning in the corner from death to life. And the resistance that you're feeling is the curb resistance. And you know, I want to speak to you. Some people feel more resistance than others because there's, their trains are longer than others, I think. And it depends what you're all fighting for and what you're all called to. And don't let that discourage you. They say the bigger the breakthrough, the bigger, the bigger the reward, the bigger the, 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 the bigger, the, sorry, they say the bigger the battle, the bigger the breakthrough will be. And I believe that, I believe that even in the sense of a train, you know, it, the more cars you pull, the more the, the resistance of the curve. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. I couldn't keep that to myself because it's, uh, the Lord has charged me not to keep these things to myself because the body needs them. They need to be strengthened and they need to be encouraged. And they're not just for me to selfishly keep to myself. And I enjoy sharing them so much with you and to encourage the ecclesia, encourage the remnant and sharing the dreams and the all those confirmations he gave me. If you just hopped on now, you've only been on for a few minutes, please go to the front of this live and hear all the all the things God spoke to me this morning, and it will so build your heart up. We are turning the corner from death to life. And we are feeling the resistance of the curve. So don't don't be discouraged. It means you're turning the corner. It means you're turning a corner. It means you're turning a corner. The resistance you feel means you're turning the corner. You're feeling the curve of the resistance. Hallelujah. So keep decreeing and keep declaring. And don't don't let up. I want to read an awesome. I want to read my two. Well, two of my favorite breakthrough scriptures with you because they're just so good. Can I know? Okay. This is one of my favorite. The very first sermon I ever preached was on this scripture. It's years and years ago. I was like, oh, so nervous. But I remember it. I'll never forget it. So Israel came to Baal Perizim and David smote the Philistines there. Then David said, God has broken my enemies by my hand, like the bursting forth of waters. Therefore, they called the name of that place, Baal Perism, the Lord of the breakthrough. Can anybody say amen to that? And listen what he said. God has broken my enemies by my hand. He needs our involvement. He needs the sword coming out of our mouth. And we join together with him and we decree his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And when we decree and declare and give him praise and glory, we are giving him territory for those chunks of <laughs> falling down from the heavens and coming onto earth and reassembling his kingdom and reassembling on this earth. Isn't that a beautiful picture? He is the Lord of the breakthrough. It literally says that's First Chronicles 14.11. And then this one, this is one of my favorites. It says, Isaiah 45, 2. I will march out in front of you. I love the image of Jesus marching out in front of us. I will march out in front of you. And I will level, level, I will level every obstacle. I will shatter to pieces bronze doors. And I will slice through iron bars. And that's what I declare over you today. That's Isaiah 45, verse 2 in the Passion Translation. That the Lord is marching out in front of you. He is leveling, leveling every obstacle, shattering every, every bronze door to pieces and slicing through every iron bar that is against you. And so I just declare that breakthrough is your portion. The angels of breakthrough are here. The God of the Lord of the breakthrough lives inside of you, and we have breakthrough in our mouths. We've got a we've got a whole book, a whole book of breakthrough, don't we, guys? A whole book. 
a breakthrough thing, breakthrough words for us to for us to decree. So I hope that that encouraged you, that I took you along with me on my morning morning devotions. I see so many great comments in here, and I always look forward to. Oh, oh, I don't see where it went. Anyways, I think it was Donna Buchanan. She was listing some Canadian prophets. Uh, I was like, thank you, Donna, for doing that, for highlighting. Oh, yeah, very much, very miracle. Mark, Rizwa, Art, Lucy, Fateen. They have worked so tire tirelessly and for our for our country and they have taken the front front lines and worked so tirelessly for canada to you know for the kingdom of god to come into canada and his will to be done here for him to have dominion from sea to shining sea and we thank god for those prophetic forerunners that have been willing to pave and go forward when there were many in the land we thank god for them and i honor them so I hope you were blessed. I was blessed just telling you that. I was excited to share with you. Please go back to the front if you hopped on later. And I'll be coming on in the next little while with a direct word for Canada on a vision that the Lord took me into on Saturday and gave me some um, very strong words over Canada. And I'm very excited about it. So. Keep your eyes tuned to heaven's news. Don't watch the world's news. And keep that, don't sheath your sword. Don't sheath your sword, you guys. I know when you're weary, I have been utterly weary. I have been fighting a neurological disease for four years, and I am utterly, utterly weary. But when you are weary, Encourage yourself in the Lord with the word. Do like David did. He encouraged himself. Remember when he came back and they had taken all his wives and his children away and he had just came back from war and he said, Lord, and it says, and he encouraged himself in the Lord and he said, should I go, go, should I go and pursue? And God said, pursue and you will recover all. And I'm saying that to you right now. Don't be weary. This is the year to pursue and recover all in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I just pray a breakthrough anointing on every person on live and on the replay. I pray for a holy boldness to come on them right now. May every single spirit of doubt and every single lying structure in our minds and in our hearts and our spirits, I pray that they would be broken by the truth of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you say, that you will lead and guide us into all truth. And we trust you and we believe you. The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me and he guides me. And we thank you that it is the truth that sets us free. And we trust you. And I just decree there is a breakthrough anointing that the Lord is releasing. He is under releasing breakthrough angels. And we are rounding the corner. The, we are coming around the curve, feeling the curve of resistance. We are turning the corner from death to life. I declare that over Canada. I declare that over the nations, over the over America, and anyone else, anyone's listening, even outside of out of Canada. I just declare over the nations, we are turning the corner from death to life, and do not look to the world to see if that's really true. Look to the spirit realm. Look to the word. We walk by faith and not by sight. And we don't all we don't all believe that when I see it. We see it in here and. The, and then we see it there. We believe it, and then we see it. So I love you guys. I felt that breakthrough anointing when I was releasing it over you. Receive it. Put your hands around it like a sword and use it. And I just thank you for being on here with me. It's 1028. You guys need to go to bed probably. I should probably go to bed too. Now I'll be so fired up though for a while. I'll have to calm myself down because I get so fired up about when I when the prophetic anointing comes on me that it takes me out takes me a while to slow down so in the comments you guys i'm going to put the live that i posted two years ago please watch it 
there is an anointing and a grace on it. It was good for me to watch it because I look a lot healthier there and I looked and I you can see lots of joy on my face, which now a lot oftentimes you see you can see the the tiredness on my face. You can kind of see. I try to look look happy, but you can kind of see what I've been through a little. I don't want to feel encouraging to watch that and just, you know, doing what I was called to do in the Lord. You're that remind me that, that this is not my and I'm not staying here. And you're not staying in the spot you are in either, guys. We are turning the corner in Jesus' name. So I'll put that link in the comments and then I'll put a, I'll put a post in the comments also. That Roger Sapp did a breakthrough, and I think that's everything that I promised to put in the um, comments for you. If I promise to put anything else in the comments for you, then message me because I don't always catch all the comments. Message me if I forgot to add something. And if you want a calendar, there we are we're down to the bare minimum, but there are still a few. So just let me know. And I will try my very best to get you one. And I love you guys. And thank you for all your wonderful. I'm. It's like reading a good book when I go end the live and I go get a cup of tea and read all your cons. It's like reading a good book. I love you, Facebook family. I love you, the Calendar Club. I hope that word really blessed you that the Lord gave us. And so have a breakthrough. Have a breakthrough rest of your week. And I pray that you would feel um, uh, that an added weight to your decrees coming out of your mouth in Jesus' name. Thank you, guys. Love you. God bless you.